Hello and welcome to this edition of 101 with Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett. I'm Lorna Virgili and thank you for joining us. Welcome Mr. Leggett, thank you for thank joining you us Thank you for having again. me again. Well, this show, I think, we're going to talk about the budget. Sure. Uh, you have officially uh, submitted it, your proposed uh, FY14 operational budget to County Council in the last mm -hmm. few days. And first question, how challenging was it to put it together? Well, all of the budgets have been challenged for one reason or the other over the period of time that I've been County Executive, primarily because we've been in a real national, in fact, international recession. And as a result of that, it makes the decisions that you're about to make in the budgets uh, quite difficult. Uh, we've seen years of downturns and uh, slow growth in terms of our taxes. So we've had to work very, very hard to put what I consider to be a, a reasonable, sustainable budget going forward. But I think this budget probably was a little bit easier than some of the others, but not easy, <laughs> put it that way. Yeah, you, you did mention when, when you um, officially unveiled it um, that this was not the day quite yet, but we were getting close in Montgomery County as far as an yeah. easy budget was concerned. Uh, $4.8 billion, and uh, it does uh, restore back some of the funding for some of the programs that uh, were cut back in, in, in past budgets. Uh, what do you say are the highlights of this budget? Well, first of all, $4.8 uh, billion. Uh, that is the uh, overall budget, 4.1 billion in the tax supported budget. Uh, there are a couple of things that I think people should take note of. First of all, we maintain the taxes within the charter limit, which is basically raise it uh, with the rate of inflation. If you look at the last two years, we haven't even provided tax, property tax, at the rate of inflation. Uh, what that does is provide us a little bit of flexibility so that we can assist, uh, assist the county in meeting a number of objectives that we've outlined over the last few years. Number one, uh, we're going to enhance and continue to enhance public safety. We're doing that from the increases in revenues that we have, as well as the income and uh, revenues from the uh, emergency medical transport fees. That will provide us with an additional 40 police officers, the second stage of a three-stage process that would get us 120 additional officers. In addition to that, uh, we want to further reduce the response time enhance technology and ensure that we reduce overtime as it relates to the fire and rescue squad. So we're going to increase that all as well. And then we're also going to restore some of the cuts that we've made in the public libraries. The public libraries uh, were hit by almost a 30 percent reduction over the last three or four years. Last year we made an increase, uh, we provided an increase in the library's budget. Uh, we continue this, that increase this year for possibly a 10 percent increase. Now what that will do uh, provide additional personnel for the libraries. It will provide some uh, additional hours for the library, additional technology for the libraries, as well as additional material. We have a huge demand in Montgomery County for the e-books, and so this will help us to enhance that. So it's a restoration and a continuation of what we started last year. Now, when, uh, let's talk about um, education uh, a little bit. Um, funding for MCPS this year, it's, um, it's obviously full, fully funded. Mm -hmm. And an additional, I'm trying to figure out all these numbers, uh, what is additional, about 55 additional million dollars for MCPS? 55.8 million right. dollars for MCPS. Yes. Yeah. Now, here's a little bit of a difference now. From the county source of revenues, at least for the budget, we're simply providing the maintenance of effort level. Now, they asked for an additional $10 million that I felt that the county should not provide. But I said in my budget submission that if they are willing to get those additional revenues from other sources, i.e. from possible reserve funds or set-asides that they may have, then they can do that from those sources of monies. But uh, I do not feel that uh, we could, in effect, uh, provide the additional resources from county funds. So they have the authorization to spend that extra $10 million. However, uh, we simply cannot provide it from county funds. They can look at their reserves, they may get some additional revenues from other sources and expend it from that portion. Because if we did so, it would mean that we would have to cut back in other areas, either libraries, public safety, and some of the revenue enhancements that we want for our employees. Um, something that might be new this year, and, and I think you did mention that at um, your State of the County address, was uh, investing on English language training for uh, adults, adult education, English classes. And that's um, about, what, $800,000? That's about 800000 We're increasing that this year by 14%, and we will continue to increase that hopefully in the years ahead. And what we want to do with that is to make certain that we provide at least 
uh, enough revenues over the years to come that we can eliminate those long waiting lists and lines of people who want uh, some additional uh, adult uh, uh, learning experiences for, uh, for English. Uh, that's a gateway for an awful lot of people in terms of economic success and a gateway to help their kids in school. And so we need to try to enhance that. And we do not have enough uh, uh, courses available now for those people to take those classes. This will help us to reduce the amount of waiting time that people are waiting to get in those classes. And I think it's a huge benefit because for each dollar that we invest, it's a three dollar impact for our county in terms of business, in terms of how people uh, go about uh, making a contribution to the county. And um, also linkages to learning um, for an additional site of Georgia and Forest Elementary School. And this is to provide prevention and early intervention services. Um, how much money is allocated to that in the budget? Well, for, for the overall, uh, what we call the Positive Youth Initiative, there's an additional $3.1 million. And that's divided up in several different categories. Uh, for example, we are looking at how we're going to enhance the Kennedy Acosta program that takes a holistic approach to looking at the community. Uh, Excel Beyond the Bell, we will add additional spots for that, including summer programs as well. Uh, we will look at the wellness centers within the school system as well. So the combination of all of those things together is approximately $3.1 million. It's a wise investment because we're targeting the middle school level to make certain that we provide some programs and services, especially after school, between the hours of 4 and 7 in the afternoon. It's a time when many parents are still working. Kids come to homes that are completely empty. There's no adult supervision. And at a time when we have much, much more juvenile activity uh, that I think we should try to make certain that it's a positive activity and not something that uh, will become criminalized. Before you uh, actually officially unveil the budget, you did meet with uh, members of the county council. Mm -hmm. Thus far, what's been the reaction um, regarding the budget itself? I think overall very positive. I think that one council member who uh, is indicating very well that he wants to reduce some of the uh, pay for some of the employees and reduce the energy tax as a result of that, I think that's somewhat short-sighted and will be counterproductive in the long term. Okay, we're going to continue talking about the budget with Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett. Uh, we're going to take a short break, but we'll be right back. Montgomery County residents with computers, smartphones, and other electronic devices now have convenient access to a growing variety of information. Visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov open to discover how Montgomery County government is more transparent, accessible, and efficient than ever. Access Montgomery links digital services related to accountability, accessibility, and transparency, including MC311 and county stat performance tracking. You can link to internal audits, spending disclosures, contracts, open solicitations, budgets, and free Wi-Fi locations in the county. Data Montgomery offers such information as access to employee salaries, food safety inspections, cable complaints, and residential and commercial building permits. Engage Montgomery is the new social media platform that encourages public participation on key issues and offers a place where people can share ideas on ways to improve the community. Mobile Montgomery details the county's mobile sites like MC311 and transportation storm operations, library book mine, crime reports, and ride on real time. The new open government efforts are expected to move Montgomery County towards even greater service improvements and efficiencies. We hope you'll take a look and let us know what you think by calling 240-777-6507 or emailing publicinformation at montgomerycountymd.gov. If it wasn't for his doctor, he wouldn't be here. If it weren't for Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, he wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the phone call, we wouldn't have been there. If I didn't call, I don't know where we would be. Montgomery County emergency responders are there when you need help at no cost to you. In an emergency, don't ever hesitate to call 911. If you live in Montgomery County, you will never get a bill or pay a dime. So if you have an emergency, call us. We're, We're there, there for you. you. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. 
Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to 101 with Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett. We're talking about the FY14 operational budget. Uh, employees, it seems like they might be getting some sort of pay raise. Well, yes. Uh, I want you to take in mind what has happened over the last few years. Over the last few years, Montgomery County have done things that no other jurisdiction that I'm aware of have done. Uh, for example, we furloughed our employees from four to seven days. We reduced the health benefit contributions from the county. We reduced the retirement contributions for the county. We eliminated 1,254 positions, approximately 10 percent of the entire workforce. In addition to that, for a four-year period, we provided no COLAs, and we eliminated the step increase for the employees. When you look at all of those things comprehensively and how long we've done those things, no other jurisdiction you can point to in this region have done as much as long. As a result of that, the cumulative effect of all of those things together has provided us almost a half billion dollars in savings, a half billion dollars in savings. For each individual employee, uh, they've contributed to this effort approximately $30,000 over the last four years to help make this gap that we've had over the last few years help to close it. Now, my position this year has been that we should provide a salary increase the first time in about a four-year period. Now, we've argued about what that amount should be, but when I looked at the legal risk of decisions that I made in the last few years by simply walking away, an unprecedented move for a county executive to walk away from an arbitrated decision and to look at what our employees have sacrificed and to negotiate something that I think is fair, uh, that is 6%, 6% of the last two years, when we potentially had a legal risk, an arbitrated decision, they could have provided 12 or 13 percent in one year and probably as high as 19 percent. If you look at that overall, I think to come in with a 6 percent increase, given the legal risk that we had and the history of these decisions over the last few years, I think that's a pretty good bargain for the county. And I think most people now are looking at it that way because when you look at what I said earlier that I thought that we could potentially lose in this in a legal battle, well, just what, guess what happened? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the court of uh, special appeals decided against Montgomery County, specifically against me, saying that uh, we were wrong for denying those, uh, at least including uh, those raises in the budgets in the last three or four years. But at least this year we have an agreement that would withstand some of the scrutiny and allow us to come forward with a budget that is much more sustainable. And uh, those pay raises, what's the final top going to be that for this year? What's the total amount of yeah. that? It's about another 16 percent over what we've spent from last year. Last year we had a 15 million dollar increase. This now goes to 31. So it's a 16 million dollar increase from our base budget from and last year. Of course, year. you do know that you have count members of council saying that uh, uh, it's going to cost the county over $400 million in the next few years that the county cannot afford. Well, I'm not sure about that. And I think that the decisions that we've made, looking at what we've already done, the employees have already saved us $469 million and will save us an additional $160 million each year going forward. I think that's somewhat short-sighted, and I think that when you look at it, uh, we're talking about something that's clearly within the margin, and even those, at least I only one person who said we should reduce it, and that reduction doesn't seem to be quite substantial anyway. It's more of a political statement than a realistic approach to the budget. Um, it's circling back to youth and the most vulnerable in the community for seniors, what is included in, uh, in the budget that actually will assist seniors in living in, in the county? I know there's some um, additional funding for transportation and things like that. Well, primarily the two areas that we are targeting, housing, for example, uh, we will complete the uh, housing projects that are associated with the new Silver Spring Library. Uh, we add an additional four and a half million dollars to the budget for that bring that total to about six million dollars to help for a senior housing project there as well. We've also provided revenues, revenues in the overall budget to help us to enhance a number of other housing projects that the county is looking at that may provide an additional thousand units for us over the period of time of the next year or two. In addition to that, as you mentioned, uh, the target is also to enhance transportation. 
this is one of the areas where seniors have been most vocal about the, the fact that there are, there are great programs and services throughout Montgomery County that they can take advantage of. However, uh, because they do not have the mobility to get to the senior centers, to go to the doctors when you want to, uh, we have tried to provide a, a network now working with the Jewish Council of the Aging to in fact get those seniors to those particular locations. In addition, to have uh, additional resources for them to take the power rides and other things that would allow them to get to the doctors, the grocery stores, and other places that they would like to get to, but they can't do so because of lack of mobility. It takes months to um, get this budget together. Obviously, you have to mm -hmm. work very hard uh, with different departments and, and so forth. Um, what have been the main challenges this year in particular? Well, I think expectations. Uh, people sometimes have unrealistic expectations. They know, for example, that the economic climate is changing, uh, and they want to assume that that change is permanent. They want to assume that the change is far more positive than it is. And so you have to sort of tamper expectations to make sure that as we emerge from the recession, uh, we don't come out of this and make mistakes that could turn to hurt us in the long term. Uh, so that's one of the major things we have to deal with, the expectations within our departments, within the communities that are out there, all seeking to enhance their budgets in a way that I think if you did that cumulatively uh, would be counterproductive. Now, when you couple that uh, with some of the challenges that continue to exist at the state level, for example, uh, there are some challenges related to income tax receipts and how the state and the county have collected those and whom they've collected them from and the legal basis for that as well. We still have the sequester problem that's ongoing here in Montgomery County and throughout the state and the nation. And we don't know all of the impacts of that, but we do know, based on what we've seen thus far, especially as it relates to uh, many of the federal employees being furloughed, that that could hit Montgomery County to the tune of a half million dollars per day. Uh, and if you calculate that over 20 plus days, you're talking additional $10 million. So there are some unknown factors that are out there that could hurt us. There are some actions that are being taken at the state level that could come back to hurt us. And we have to deal with expectations. So you're trying to balance all of those things together. This is why it is so important to go out and talk to people at the community forums, at the town hall meetings, so you have a be better sense of that. Um, what would be, what would you say was the most difficult part of the budget saying no to? Saying no to? Yes. Well, it was to increase programs that had a significant impact on the most vulnerable. I wanted to go even further in housing. Uh, that to me was a huge challenge. I wanted to go even further as it relates to protecting people who do not have health insurance and probably provide some additional areas for uh, future growth, economic development to bring people out. Uh, it wasn't a no, it wasn't that we could say yes much more uh, robust that is to increase it further than I wanted to. So we didn't say no. Uh, it just wasn't as strong a yes as I would like Strong Stronger yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Let's talk about economic development when we come back. And you stay tuned. We'll be right back with Montgomery County Executive Act Leggett. Montgomery County 911. I just saw a car crash. If you ever have an emergency, be glad you're in Montgomery County. Thanks to the ambulance transport law, the county has more money to cut response times buy new ambulances and fire engines, and hire more paramedics and firefighters. In an emergency, don't ever hesitate to call 911. If you live in Montgomery County, you will never get a bill or pay a dime. Hopefully, you'll never need to call Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, but if you do, we're there for you. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics, such as clamshells, deli containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. Woohoo! We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today.
There's a reason why area law enforcement are out enforcing pedestrian and traffic safety laws and preventing killer pedestrian crashes. Be alert. Be street smart. Thank you for joining us again. I'm Lorna Virgili, and, and we're talking with Montgomery County Executive I'd like it about the FY14 operational budget for the county. The cat is out of the bag. Economic development, let's talk about it. And um, more resources for the Great Seneca Science Quarter, the White Oak Science Gateway, and of course, the Shady Grove Metro area, the White Flame Plant. Uh, what does that mean for jobs in the county? Well, potentially that may mean as much as uh, 100,000 jobs for the county uh, because a good deal of our long-term growth for the county is tied to those projects. But you cannot have sustainable economic growth unless you have the transportation network that is designed with the infrastructure to allow those things to happen. Potentially, if we're not able to, in fact, ensure that we have some additional transportation dollars, it means that the second and third stages of the Science Center, for example, may be halted. It may mean that we're not able to move with the Science Gateway in the East County, and it could seriously hamper the uh, development of White Flint as well. So we need to pair both transportation with a sustainable economic growth factor that impacts Montgomery County in a very positive way. This is 100,000 jobs of quality jobs that will come to Montgomery County and could be here to provide a, an economic base and a tax base for this county for well, well into the future. We talked about affordable housing for seniors, but how about uh, non-seniors? Well, we continue to enhance that as well. If you look at what we've done over the last five years, we provided approximately $272 million of additional uh, support for affordable housing. That's an unprecedented amount. Uh, when you compare where we are today compared to the past. Uh, we generated in the last few years a great deal of money is into that and as a result of that we've had some pretty good successes. We have probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 8,000 uh, affordable units that we've either been able to construct, preserve, or maintain in some fashion in Montgomery County. It allowed us to intervene in terms of uh, people who were potentially uh, on the close to foreclosure and evictions in the county. So we've had, in my opinion, great success in that area. There's still, unfortunately, a huge problem that is out there, and we've tried to work with AIM, seniors, and others to enhance that. And hopefully, uh, as the economy improves, we'll be able to maintain, at least to increase, uh, the efforts that we've had in the last few years. But I think that when you look at the record of this administration, I think you'll find that we've had a very good uh, uh, first start thus far and what we've accomplished. There's still a great deal of work to go because there's still too many people out there who need a decent and safe affordable housing and I think we need to get to that and maintain that level of contributions from our budgets and hopefully we'll be able to do that in the foreseeable future. Um, of course, I mean, this budget covers so many programs, all programs in the county and, and so forth. We talked earlier about uh, feedback mm -hmm. from County Council, but we had to go to commercial break, and I think you didn't quite finish that. Um, have you heard back from them any feedback regarding? Of course, they're going to do their process that they have to do and to approve. I, and I think so the forth. feedback has been pretty pretty positive. But what I meant by that, you have to look at the process that we have and the people that we have working on this budget. Uh, this is not singularly by myself. I have a great deal of advisors and people supporting me. Uh, we have a terrific uh, a management budget officer and Jennifer Hughes. Uh, Joe Beach at Finance and, and, and really the Grand Slam home run hitter Tim Feinstein who was the incoming president of the uh, national government financial offices of the entire country. That's a huge statement. And then you couple that with what we also have across the street the county council, Steve Farber and Glenn Orrin and that crew over there. So it provides us with excellent people, a road map that has allowed us to maintain a AAA bond rating and to do many things that you see other jurisdictions not able to do. Uh, at this point in time, when you see that other jurisdictions are now beginning to cut back and to go on furlough, when we are at this point adding additional police to our force and adding salary increases, the question may be, how is that possible? It is possible because we made the very difficult decisions. We took the bitter medicine for a long period of time much earlier. And as a result of that, we now see some of the potential benefits as, as a result of that, as opposed to what you may have seen in some of the other jurisdictions. We took some very difficult steps here in Montgomery County. Funding, um, about $7 increase on the monthly property tax bill. 
and of course WSSC, water and sewer. Um, an average month, monthly increase of five dollars. Um, what, where else is the money going to come from to fund all this? Well, the combination tax. of things. We had some very good news in terms of the income tax distribution. We delayed some funding for projects toward the end of FY12. Uh, we had some set asides that we were able to realize both in the school budget and when you have the modest increase that you've just talked about, uh, the fact that the tax bill, property tax, is only going up about $6, six dollars six sixty uh, per household, average household, and the water bill is only going up about five dollars or so. Uh, now why is that? Well, we have huge problem with the infrastructure of WSSC. Water lines are breaking as we speak, and so that money is used to help us to upgrade the uh, infrastructure of the Water, uh, Washington Urban Sanitary Commission that hopefully will reduce the amount of breakage that we will have. You can't simply not, uh, you can't ignore uh, the challenge that we have a system that is very old and so that increase is designed in many ways to help us to enhance that system overall. The future, what does it hold? I mean you're done with this budget but soon enough you're going to have to be working in the next one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never stop working. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's it's a continuing money. process. And running this, this, running this ship. <laughs> yeah, it's a continuing process. But as I said before, you have a great deal of help, uh, large numbers of people who have a great deal of expertise. And we're on top of virtually everything that happens in the county. Uh, one of the challenges we have now is to make sure that our capital budgets are in line with the major constructions that we have. And we continue to evaluate that almost on a weekly or daily basis. Um, I think you wanted to mention the Silver Spring Transit announcement that was recently made as well. Yes, I made a, a very, uh, I think it has now it's turned out to be a right decision to delay the project, to look further into some of the challenges that we've had there, some of the safety concerns. And we've received a, a report that really shows that the, the center is seriously compromised and that had we not uh, evolved our consultants in a more exhaustive report, it could have really jeopardized the center and many of the people who utilize that center. Uh, what we are doing now is to go forward, make certain we have the remediation, and open the center. But I will not do so unless I'm clearly satisfied that it is safe and it is well uh, uh, prepared to go forward for the, for the users of that center. We have just a couple of seconds left to wrap up the show. Is there anything else you would like to add and tell Montgomery County residents regarding this operational budget? Well, I think the budget is a fair one. If you look at it in terms of revenues, I indicated we would not raise taxes beyond the charter limit, that we would provide resources for our employees. I've taken some very difficult steps against our employees the last four years. I think it's now time for us to run more, uh, respond much more positively to the challenges that they have in helping us to operate this very outstanding government that we have. Thank you very much, Mr. Leggett. Thank you. You can take a <laughs> short breather and then start all over again. <laughs> and for you watching, always remember you can view the entire budget in the county's website, MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching.